Well, it's time for us to take off again. Well, maybe not that fast, but cold air has arrived, and it's time to head to the land of coyotes and cactus. But first, let's weigh the camper and offer our top tips for keeping your weight in check. Then we'll find some Route 66 gems before hitting a Cracker Barrel for a good night's sleep. Let's go! There is nothing wrong with your video stream. We are controlling your feed. Sit quietly and experience the awe and mystery from the outer limits of the open road. We're just getting ready to put the camper on and Bill's doing a smoke test because he swapped out the circuit board. It's 50 degrees here in Michigan, so it seems like the right time to head out of town. Time to get out of Dodge. So I'm looking for an explanation. You said there was an explanation for that license plate? Uh, yeah. That's from an old Seinfeld episode. The guy was a proctologist. <laughs> that is a little ridiculous in my opinion. <laughs> How does it look? Off. Off. I'm freezing cold. I just put on the tie down so my hands hands are a mess. But we're making it happen. We're making the donuts. I just love portable electricity. <laughs> mm -hmm. Last minute uh, grocery run before we hit the road. Mm -hmm. Got a few things to eat. Peanuts. Peanuts, yay. <laughs> So we're rolling into the logs here to weigh the camper and truck. A little bit terrifying. Hopefully we will only be six ounces overweight. Six ounces. That's, that's what we're going for. We'll let you know what the result is. First way. Tracker number? Uh, this is a personal vehicle. Right, go ahead and move forward to a designated area. We'll see you inside. Yep. So that's all pretty easy. And now we just wait for the numbers. Oh, we're not going to like the numbers. But the numbers, the numbers don't lie, that's what they say. So I'm just enjoying my Hardee's low carb breakfast bowl. Well, enjoying it is probably an overstatement. I'm eating it. We finished up at the scale and it's not as bad as I feared. Brought a few extra art supplies and we're doing good. We're lower, lower weight than we rolled when we rolled in home last year. So awesome job. You ready for me to dump it? <laughs> no, I'm not done with it. <laughs> so the official word is that you're pretty pleased with the scale weight? Yes. 340 pounds down from uh, what we had coming back on our first trip. That's pretty significant. We made an effort. An effort was made. 
So, I guess it was a good idea to leave my bowling ball collection home this time. And well, especially considering we also had the scorpions. Yeah, in the in the glass <laughs> container. In the glass container, yeah. yeah. <laughs> However, there might be a few rocks. Shh. There might be a few rocks stashed in back. Let's but, not talk about but it. Lucy. <laughs> Mission failure. So what did we do to drop 340 pounds? And how do we keep all that weight off? Number one, choose collapsible or lightweight items. Bucket. Multi-use bowl. Mixing bowl. Popcorn popper. Stock pot. Sauce pot. Teapot. Cup. Measuring cups. Toaster. Silicone lids. Number two. Look for items that have multiple uses, not just a single purpose. Kind of like a Swiss Army knife of uh, whatever it is you're looking for. Coffee stir and slotted spoon. Snack bowl, baking dish, and plunger. Instead of having a whole bunch of different screwdrivers, I have a screwdriver with an interchangeable bit. So now it's a flathead screwdriver. Now it's the square end screwdriver, or it could be a Phillips head, not to mention the fact that I can change it to become a nut driver. And I can also change things around so that I can have a screwdriver that's on an angle, just by mixing these bits with the different sockets. For wrenches, I would prefer to have some combination wrenches or box end wrenches, but I can't afford the weight, so I got one really good quality crescent wrench. Number three, consider replacing heavier components in your camper with lighter weight components. It is your camper, you decide. One of the things we did was remove the heavy dinette table and replace it with some lightweight swivel tables and some boat seats. We removed the big, heavy television cabinet and replaced it with just a swing arm for the television. We also removed some of the bunk bed components we knew we were never going to use. Number four, consider a limited wardrobe to see how we did it Check the link down below. Number five, don't hoard supplies. We find that we are rarely far from a store or an Amazon locker. Number six, <laughs> be realistic about what you actually need. This is my complete toolkit. Just a very small amount of tools focused to do what we need on the road. The neat thing about campers are most of the screws are the same. That head right there is used in a lot of places. That's a square head. And then this is a Phillips head. There's more Phillips head screws around here. There's very, very few flat head screws and a very small amount of nuts and bolts that you might have to work with. But you won't need to work with them very often, so you don't really need a whole bunch of different tools. Lucky number seven, rely on your community or your neighbors. Borrow things, loan things. Consider joining a community like the Escapees RV Club, where you might find things to borrow like these. Compressed air, rattlesnakes, wood lathe, scroll saw, grinder, vise, drill press, sander, bandsaw, another sander, cutoff saw, table saw. All sorts of hand tools. Welding area. Backhoe. Ladders. Wheelbarrows. And if you really need it, blacksmithing equipment. At the best little hoe house in Benson. Look at this nice little horse. Many campgrounds have lending libraries. Why not borrow a book instead of bringing your own? Leave a book. Borrow a book. Consider reading on a Kindle and borrowing ebooks from your home library. And finally, number eight, purge frequently. If you're not using an item, get rid of it. You don't need the extra weight. Many campgrounds even have a swap table where you can take something you need and leave something you don't.
So this is the first meal of the trip. And uh, we're sitting at a Love's truck stop, because why not? At least we've got fresh food and good company. Cold chicken. And cold chicken. Here we are in Odell, Illinois, at this old Standard Oil station, restored and vintage. To the, it's a historic landmark. Let's see what we got here. Love these old gas pumps. The crown on top. What's inside? Some vintage cars, vintage iron of some sort. What's inside? There's a motorcycle, an old Harley. It's a store. Oh. So there's t-shirts for sale, okay. but there's a whole bunch of old automotive uh, mm -hmm. equipment in here. Let's see if we can see inside. It's difficult because of the glass. Yeah, that's not gonna work, but that's okay. Sometimes you can see the things and sometimes you can't. During this last year and a half of travel, it's there have been a lot of difficult days where we couldn't really see anything because of COVID. And sometimes your hours are just not ideal. You come by at a time that's not convenient and nothing's open, but still worthwhile and a cool little place. Check out that little trailer, that's pretty cool. Yeah, but do you think ours is better than that one? Oh, definitely. I think we're, uh, we'll still take our Cirrus over that little trailer. We're spoiled. We are very spoiled. That may not have the amenities that our lifestyle demands, right? Well, Probably no TV. It's got an outside toilet that's bigger than ours. Well, I guess that is a bonus. <laughs> so you found something interesting? Well, possibly. Press blue button for recorded message. You're going to do, consider it done. Welcome to Odell, Illinois. Oh. We are happy that you're visiting the historic Standard Oil filling station on original Route 66. The purpose of this restoration project is to preserve this simple structure so that future generations can see what original gasoline stations were like. Since 1996, volunteers have worked very hard to make this a reality. What you see is the result of thousands of hours of dedicated efforts and a true labor of love. This structure was built in 1932 and the two bays were added in 1937. The style is known as a house with a canopy. Oh. The station was one of at least 10 gas stations on this original section of Route 66. A restaurant once occupied the area where the camper and signs are now located. Fire destroyed it in the 1970s. In the beginning, this was a standard oil station. In later years, it served as a Phillips 66, then a Sinclair dealer. The station represents another generation, a time when the pace was a little slower and travel was an adventure. Tens of thousands of people have passed this way before you. Some say that if you sit on the bench and close your eyes, you can sense, even hear the sounds of folks from long ago. It is a magical moment. The excitement of travel, the apprehension of what lies ahead on the ribbon of road known as...
pretty, some pretty amazing folk art. gosh, that sun is bright. That stop, that elephant was one of the most amazing pieces of folk art I have ever seen. And it's not that old. It's 2020. The 2020 election, a gentleman named Mr. Wells was uh, running as a write-in candidate for president and carried, created the elephant and carried it around the country uh, as part of his campaign. And now it's just here in Lexington, Illinois, right off Route 66. And I could just have stayed there for hours. I took a few too many photos. I'm sure that you would be blessed with those at some point, but I love finding roadside art. That was amazing. When you park next to the hill, don't need your steps to get in. It's pretty handy. Thank you, Cracker Barrel. We planned that. You planned that? Yeah, we researched that. Oh yeah, how to not need your steps. I like it. Show us how it's done. <laughs> what? Show us how it's done. Just boop, 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 and you're in. Now I lock you in there and drive away. <laughs> and since uh, if those have your personal information on it, or if they might, usually those are going to be stripped for parts. If it has usable parts, likely those part of thing, it scanning for channels. What if, it, what if it's like a like a blouse or a pair of pants? Or Found something? some nice NPR here to listen on how to. Nice the blouse or pair of pants is. <laughs> okay. We're gonna settle down, have some peanuts <laughs> for a snack. If it, if and maybe look at the uh, Cracker Barrel menu uh, for breakfast. Decide if we're going to get something to go. It might get put back into Join us next time as we explore the delights of Route 66 byways and discover a host of giants along the way. See you on the road. We could get out of town See the beautiful world around Want to see it now our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far